All right, so the next section is pretty straightforward. I'm assuming the majority of you are pretty comfortable adding and subtracting real numbers, but if you're not, what's going on in a number line? How can I visualize um, what we're asking when I say 3 plus a negative 5? So, what happens? I'm starting from 0. I'll just call it 0 right here. And from 0, this is telling me I need to move in the positive direction 3 units. So, I'm going to move 1, 2, 3 away from 0, and I hit positive 3, which makes sense. Then from there, I now want to move negative 5 units. So, 5 in the negative direction. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to end up over here. So, this was plus 3, this was minus 5. So, what number did we end up at? Negative 1, 2. So, you can visualize what's happening when I'm adding a negative number. Let's just show one more example, just in case. Negative 4 plus negative 3. What are we going to end up with there? Probably are really screaming at the screen, negative 7. Okay, but let's visualize it. So, I'm going to let 0 be over here. And again, the first part tells me I'm moving 4 units in the negative direction. 1, 2, 3, 4. I hit right here. Then, from there, I want to move an additional negative 3. 1, 2, 3. So, where did we end up? Negative 7. So, visually, that's what's happening on a number line. Tells us how to move in what direction from 0 originally and then from whichever point we're at. All right. So, if you like the visualization of adding real numbers, now add with a number line 3,890 minus, or plus a negative, negative 12,463. It's going to take a long time. It's going to be really big, so we kind of want to work around that. So, what are the rules for addition of real numbers? It's kind of fancy language in the little box, but we can break it down into a more simple language. So, for positive numbers, if I'm adding two positives, what kind of number comes out? It's going to be positive. And if I'm adding two negative numbers, what comes out? It's always negative. All right. If we have a positive number and a negative number, we have a few different options. If they're the exact same, so if I'm adding and subtracting the exact same number, what do we get out? Zero. They cancel out each other. If the numbers have different absolute values, so they're not exactly the same, then what happens? If the positive number is greater than the negative, its absolute value, then the answer is positive. But if the negative has greater absolute value than the positive, so the negative number outweighs the positive, then our answer is going to be negative. So, if you see that little chart in the book, that's what it's talking about. All right. If one of the numbers is zero, the sum is the other number. Makes sense. We can add zero to anything without changing it. So, rule four, that last one, I can add zero and not change the number. It is known as the additive identity property. So, it says that for any real number A, A plus zero whatever number it is, if I add 0 to it, I'm still going to get out A. So, we're going to use that in a little bit. So, without using a number line, let's add these few together. Negative 12 plus negative 7. So, they're both negatives, so my answer should be a greater negative. How many am I going to have? Negative 19. All right, negative 1.4 plus 8.7. Is it going to be positive or negative in the end? Positive, because my positive number is larger 
then the absolute value of negative 1.4. So let's see. 8.7 and I'm taking away 1.4. We're adding a negative to it. What am I left with? So I've got 4, 5, 6, 7. I have 3 down there and 7 over here. So we're left with that number. Then what about for part C? If I add negative 11 plus negative 11, do I get out 0? They're the same number, exactly the same. Nope, we get another negative 22. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> All right. So I'm assuming you're pretty comfortable with this, but I do have one for you to try. So add 15 plus negative 2 plus 7 plus negative 5. Give it a shot. So many of you probably just went left to right, just broke it down as we went. Or some of you might have grouped together the positives, combined those, combined the negatives, then combined them together. But regardless, what do we get? So if I combine positive and positive, I've got 22. If I combine my negative, I'm looking at negative 7. So out we get 15. And if you just went left to right, you got the same. So what does that tell us? We can add in any order that we want. We can add in any order we wish. All right, so there's a name for that. It's commutative. I can commute these, change the order, and it's not going to matter. I can add in any order that we want. We'll discuss those terms later on. So, let's do an example. 15 plus negative 2, plus 7, plus 14, plus negative 15, plus negative 12. So I can change the order. I'm going to put my positives together and my negatives together if I want to go that route. Or the other option I can do is just move left to right. So we grouped in this last example. Let's just go left to right. So, combining these two, 15 plus negative 2 will give me 13. And I still have all this that's left. To that, I'm adding 7. So now I'm talking about 20. And again, you can do this all in one step without writing out everything. 20 plus another 14 is going to give me 34. Almost there. 34 minus 15, or adding negative 15, we've got 19 left. And if I'm adding a negative 12, so taking away 12, we're left with 7. But again, whatever order you want to go in. If you want to combine the negatives first and combine the positives, you'll still get there. All right. So, some language for when we're talking about adding a negative. What do we really mean? So opposites are additive inverses. Two numbers whose sum is zero are called opposites, or um, more mathematically sound terminology, terminology, additive inverses. So for any real number a, the additive inverse of a, denoted negative a, is such that if I add them together, if I add positive and its opposite, I get out zero every single time. So what are the opposites of these few different numbers? Give them a shot. So the opposite of 34, or the additive inverse, is negative 34. Opposite of negative 72 is going to give me positive. C, opposite of 0? It is the additive inverse. And opposite of negative 7 ninths is just going to be positive 7 ninths. So now we're going to get a little bit more complicated. What about if I talk about the opposite of an opposite of an opposite? What do I end up with in reality in that case? So you should count. How many times can she say opposite in this section? So symbolizing opposites, that's at least like 10. The opposite or additive inverse of a number A can be named 
negative a or the opposite of a. That's what our negative means out on the front. So if I take 9, what is its opposite? Its opposite is going to be negative 9. What is the opposite of that? So what does it look like? The opposite of negative 9 turns out to be positive 9. Okay, so the opposite of the opposite is that number itself. So if I'm looking at negative of a negative a, the opposite of the opposite of a, we get out what we started with, that initial a value. So evaluate negative x and negative negative x when x is 23 reps. <laughs> so in this first part, I get the opposite of 23, negative 23. And in the second part, what do I get out? The opposite of the opposite of 23. Gives me out 23. All right. So my x value was positive in that case. What about if it's negative? I'm going to evaluate those same things, but when x is negative 4. So I'm looking at negative of negative 4. The opposite of negative 4 is positive 4. And what else? We want the opposite of the opposite of negative 4. Wow. Opposite of the opposite of negative 4. So there's group, group, group. What do we get out? So negative and a negative gives me a positive together. Positive and a negative will give me a negative. So you have to be careful when we're talking about the opposite of opposite of opposites because we need these parentheses. We need more. We can't just write out minus, minus, minus 4. So it's really kind of improper math. So we need more parentheses. E parenthesis. I guess it would be E there, wouldn't it? Yeah, whatever. So evaluate negative x and negative negative x when x is two thirds and when x is negative nine. So what are we looking at in that first case? My value that I'm plugging in for x is positive, so the opposite of x will be negative twenty three, and the opposite of the opposite of two-thirds, I think I said 23, is positive two-thirds, initially what we started with. Those ones aren't so bad, but if that value is negative, it gets a little bit more complicated. So I'm asking for the opposite of x. Opposite of negative 9 is positive 9. And the opposite of the opposite of our number is going to be what? So we get a positive there and negative. All right, so be careful with that language. Be sure to put parentheses in there so you can tell what you're taking the opposite of.